Welcome to the Explore Composites Materials Library. This is laminate sample number 22. This one's a little strange. It's vacuum bag Kevlar on aluminum honeycomb core with epoxy done all in one shot. And it's not something you'd really do for any good reason, but it's a nice demonstration of the materials and the process. So what is Kevlar? Kevlar is like a super nylon. It's an aramid fiber invented by DuPont in the 1970s. It's really strong and tough. It's almost impossible to cut unless you have the right scissors. It's also very light. Low density, almost like flax, and that affects your volume fraction when you're calculating the resin use. But it has high tensile strength and relatively high specific strength. Uh, almost what you'd get from carbon and significantly better than glass. In order to cut it, I'm using these special Kevlar shears. They have a abrasive coating on the blade. It's important not to use them for anything but Kevlar or they'll get ruined. So I have mine marked very carefully Kevlar only. So I weighed the fiber I got about 80 grams here and I'm going to make quite a lot of resin relative to the fiber compared to what you do with glass. And I've got some edges to support the aluminum honeycomb. Starting out weighing the resin, tearing the cup, poured the resin in, did my calculation and added the hardener. This is ProSet laminating resin 135. It's relatively thick and made sure to give it a really good mix, scraping the sides and bottom. So to wet this out, I just laid it out on the table and I'm going to wet through with the epoxy. Now this is some Kevlar that has been folded up on a shelf probably for 10 years. And you can see the crease there from being folded. Ideally it would come off a roll. Kevlar also has some UV degradation issues so as I wet it through you'll be able to see where the corner of that material had been exposed to probably to the sun to a window something at some point it's darkened I don't know what that does to the mechanical properties right here I don't really care it's more for demonstration purposes and to get a sense of how the material handles and also to show how you can do wet layup on a honeycomb in one shot and how it's not ideal but it does work. So I'm not being super fussy here about how much resin. This is only a six ounce piece of Kevlar and when you handle it you'll feel that it's much more substantial than you would get from like a six ounce e-glass or even carbon. It feels really thick more like a, a nine ounce or ten ounce material. Um, because Kevlar is lower density, it just takes more Kevlar, um, so it's, it's thicker. And I'm wetting it out really well here, having flipped it over. And what I'm doing is wetting out the second ply, what's going to be the ply for the top skin on top here. And then I'm going to pull it back up and store it off to the side on this piece of plastic bin lid and I'll roll the Kevlar out really nicely grab my aluminum honeycomb which has also been around the block um, and put the wood frame on it just so that the vacuum bag doesn't mess up the edges of the core so I'm going to take my very wet top skin put it just plop it on there and roll it out you can see it looks like it's not really soaking in Kevlar doesn't really suck up the resin the way glass does. It doesn't change color. You can't really tell what's going on. Um, it really feels like it doesn't want to stick at all. But this is just a normal vacuum bag. I've got some breather, perfilm, peel ply. And I'm going to bag it down without an awful lot of vacuum. Here I've put the seal and tape on the bag, which is something I like to do. It makes it easy trying to make sure I don't have any resin sloppiness underneath the tape because that'll definitely set you back 
And I'm going to suck it down here uh, with not much vacuum, probably half or so full vacuum. Maybe, I think it was 12, 12 inches of mercury. Um, and let it cure overnight. I think I may have set the table at about, I don't know, yeah, 78F and 12 inches of mercury I wrote on the bag so that I would remember. And here it is. You can see it didn't bleed an awful lot. Probably a fair bit of resin in the cells. We'll see when we cut the honeycomb. Um, I did not make a great deal of effort to get the resin out of this. Uh, if you see laminate sample number one uh, was a similar outcome with carbon and Nomex, but I did that in two shots. Really tried to limit how much resin was in it, see how light it could get it. Um, this one, I just went with it. Um, and much less pinhole -y than some other say laminate sample one or some of the others you can see that discoloration there um, overall feels pretty nice now we're coming to one of the really problematic bits with Kevlar is it's super hard to cut um, even when it's laminated I did not have a bandsaw to give this a try so I'm using a sharp razor knife with a fresh blade I think I broke it off a couple of times to get a fresh edge it really does a number on the edge and this is a pretty uh, sketchy way to do it fortunately I've got that safety ruler and no fingers were harmed. But it does a decent job. Uh, if this were more than one ply, yeah, this wouldn't work very well. But the edge came out a little nasty, and I started with this coarse 60 grit sandpaper on the board, and it really just turns to fuzz. You'll find sanding Kevlar. It just it doesn't cut very well. It, it just turns to fuzz. And one good way to make it not be so fuzzy is to get lighter and lighter sandpaper finishing off Kevlar edge with say 400 grit on a DA can get a really nice surface. Overall the panel came out better than I thought. It's nice and shiny on one side, some very light pinholes um, in a few places and it felt really rugged. The, it's really really stuck onto that core um, and the edges looked really pretty good. You could see just a little bit of um, pinholes and air in that surface and again there's the fuzzy Kevlar um, I didn't do a lot to try and make it nice it's pretty light it came out about uh, five and an eighth ounces for that one square foot and 145 grams taking a piece here and giving it a break you can see that bottom skin compresses Again, Kevlar is not that awesome in compression compared to um, carbon or glass. And um, it also it really doesn't stick that great. Um, oftentimes it's used with glass uh, in order to get better adhesion or to get a surface that you can actually sand. And because it's Kevlar, I want to just give it some damage to see how well it holds together. It doesn't shatter. I think carbon in this situation would be much more brash, even glass. Uh, it absorbs the energy of the hammer, breaks where it needs to break, doesn't propagate damage. It's really useful for situations like you know, the bottoms of race cars and um, airplane wing leading edges and the bottoms of boats and things like that where holes are really bad and damage propagation is a real issue. It's also very uh, abrasion resistant. So if you're going to be rubbing on something, Kevlar is great. It did look really well attached. That's the resin. Um, you see where I hit it with a hammer. Fiber broke where it needed to break. And um, this it was relatively nicely stuck to the core. So there it is. It's a example of a couple of different things all mixed together. Thanks for checking it out.